Hi everybody, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I'm going to show you how to make these four cards and it's just alternative ways of using the new Creative Craft Products Easy Fold dies. Now, to be honest, and I always say that you can make pretty much anything without dies. Sometimes it might take you longer than others, but a lot of these you can make without the dies as well. But for those that have these dies, and like I always say on a Tuesday and Thursday, the tutorials that I share always have a die focus. Then I just wanted to show you how I've made these ones. They're really, really fun. Thoroughly enjoyed making these ones. So let's get started. So for this card, I'm going to use the six by six hexagon fold. So I've already gone ahead and cut everything that I need. I'm also using the papers from my Christmas backgrounds paper pad and then the stamps from the stamp set here that's also been launched with this little collection. So what I did was just cut, first of all, two of the largest one. OK, I've got two different greens, but that's fine because I'm doing this kind of Christmas tree style. So just taken that one there and just cut that one twice. And then I've just dropped each one down by half an inch. So you can either cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these and then just cut them down. I actually just cut into scraps and got it to the size that I wanted. So if I just sit them in here, I can give you the measurements. You don't have to have as many layers as I have. It's because I dropped down by that half inch. Yeah, so this one is five and a half. And then the next one is five and then so on down to down to three and a half. So, but like I said, it's up to you. Just This is just more for inspiration. And then I've cut a pattern piece, again, half an inch smaller again. I've then cut this piece here, which is the six inch width of the card by two inches and along the two inch side I've scored at one inch. Just gonna fold that in half, and that's gonna be my little stopper in the middle. And then this is gonna be what attaches the top together. So that this is half an inch by two. And again, I've scored at one inch along the two inch side. I've also stamped the little wreath. I thought it was such a nice, quite modern style. And you've got the dies to cut that as well. So I'll get that one cut out in a minute. And then I've stamped the have a tremendous day uh, sentiment there. And I'm going to cut that one out as well. But we'll do that when we go to death rate. So first of all, I want to attach these together. So you get your score line. I always like to go over mine using my scoreboard. In fact, I've not done that one. So I'll quickly show you that now. So just pop it in and find a track that you can line it up with and just score over that one. Okay, and I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to run my glue just in the middle, just along that tab there, and then pop this one over the top. So you've got something like that, and you're going to do the same with the other side. So you've created this M fold. Okay, so both the tabs are stuck underneath there, so now that can stand up. Now I'm going to close mine off completely and I'm going to have this piece stuck in there. But if you want to have it so that your message is inside, you might want to pop a gift card in there, then just pop this together with a magnet if you want. But I prefer using the hook and loop. You can just stick a pair together in there and then attach it that way because I'm going to have my message on the back for this version, just so I've got lots of different um, examples. OK, I forgot to mention about the springs. Now, you might not want to add these. You might just want to pop some foam pads in between the layers and not have it as bulky. I am wondering whether I'm going to end up using this and end up going for the hook and loop because um, I do want this to have a gift card in it. So the amount of these is going to vary depending on how many layers you have. But I think for certainly the larger back ones here, you're going to need three. So I'll just cut a few for the minute and I'll, I'll add more. I'll cut more when I need them. But these are two and a half by one inch. And along the two and a half side, you're going to score at half an inch three quarters and one inch and then one and a half one and three quarters and two these are the same little springs that i made for the spring star card that i put up not too long ago so you want to fold it so that you have a mountain then a valley and then a mountain then you'll have another mountain a valley and then another mountain so the idea is, is that you have these spring sides and then two pieces at the bottom that can overlap one another and that's going to be your spring okay add a little bit of glue to the bottom and just stick them together 
So what I would say is get, you know, just make yourself a few springs. These are great for using up any scrap pieces of card that you might have. And then you've got them at hand then to just add, you know, as and when you need them. So I'm just going to get a bunch of these done. Okay, so I'm going to take the first one, flip it over, and I'm going to add a spring at the top and then either corner at the bottom there. So I'm just going to again add a little bit of glue and pop those in place. And I'm going to do two others whilst that's drying. Okay, then I've got the front of the card and I've just popped some glue on the other side and I'm just going to sit this over the top. Now, squash it down and make sure they run nice and flush with the bottom. So take the next one. Then just squash it all down and pop that one over the top. And you could have pattern paper as a layer on each of these if you want, but I'm going to keep mine all plain and just finish with that front one with the tree detail. So they're all stuck down. I've just added my last piece there, which is the pattern paper. It's got such a nice spring to it. I ended up adding the hook and loops I needed to so I could build those up it was easier to have it attached but that's all ready now for me to add the gift card in there and a panel write my message I mean you can cut the die and just make a matte layer but I needed to get that stuck down now so I stuck everything down and the wreath and the sentiment didn't work how I wanted it to so I used the die to cut the sentiment even smaller because originally I just cut an oval shape so what I've ended up doing is a little topper there and I've just popped it up on some foam and then I thought it'd be really nice to have a silhouette of Father Christmas flying over the treetops or this could be a house so these could be the rooftops and you could have a little scene down here but I think it can just have something that's having maybe on that one there I'm just gonna pop a little bit of glue just on that bit so he is suspended across the other sides this is a I stamped it on 300 GSM cardstock so it's gonna hold itself but I just think that finishes it off Quite nicely. So that's another card example using the hexagon set. So for this card I'm using the 5x7 diamond fold and I thought it'd be nice to turn it into like a designer handbag. So I've taken the leather look paper here from the textures card pack by Simply Made Crafts and I've gone ahead and cut the main die here in the black card and then I've cut it again in the leather look there but I've trimmed off the tab so I can just stick that directly onto there so I'm gonna do that first okay so whilst that's drying I then cut this piece of card here and this measures seven and a half by seven along the seven and a half side you want to score at half an inch one and a half and two and a half you then want to fold so you have a mountain valley and a mountain fold and then i'm just going to cut a little bit off of the corners there that's going to become our tab and then i've cut two pieces of five by seven one in the cardstock i've already stuck these together and again one in that pattern i've just stuck them together and that's going to now stick to the front so this is going to be the bottom of our bag I'm going to take my glue again, just run that all along the tab. You want to make sure that you've got that M shape and then just stick this piece over the top. Take this piece and just fold the tab over. Now this is going to stick inside here, but before I stick that down, I want to pop the handle in between. So I've just got this piece of, um, I don't know what the length was, any, as long as you want, but it's half an inch wide. I'm just going to pop a little curve into it. I think mine's about eight inches or so. Yeah, it's about eight inches. And I'm just going to stick that inside this bit. And then that's going to go over the top. So it's sandwiched in between. You then want to add your glue all along there. Just going to spread that all out. And just focus on the fold lining up with the top of the card like so okay so that's going to come up under there that's going to come over 
and you've got your little handbag card. I thought that looked really sweet. I want to add a little bit of faux hardware. So I've got just some mirrored card here and I want to stick a strip along the very edge. So it looks like a metal trim. So I'm just going to take this piece and just lay it along there. Just make sure I've got the same kind of amount. Like so, I only want a thin strip. And then I'm going to cut around it. I just thought it was a bit easier doing it that way. There we go. That really does turn it, I think, into more of a handbag style. You could add a little charm on here, some beads. You could have a gift tag. It's entirely up to you. But what I've done is I've taken the happy birthday that also comes in the die set. You've got your layers here, just like all the other sets. But I've done it in the silver to make it look like, like the branding of a handbag. And I've just cut it with some of the foam double-sided adhesive. So I need to remove... I'm hoping this is all going to come off okay because it yeah so it's all cut through there but it wouldn't let me take it out without removing the release paper so i'm going to hopefully be able to carefully take this out okay so then i'm going to kind of have it maybe along there would look quite nice actually we'll do that something a bit different Okay, I really like that. Then I'm going to use the hook and loop. Now, I don't have any left in black, so I'm just going to colour a pair in here just so it disguises it a little bit because the white's going to stand out too much. And then I'm just going to pop think down in the corner there just make sure everything's lined up and there's the finished card really like this one I think it can definitely have a little key ring or something else to it you can maybe put some little silver flat back pearls or something there to act as a hardware as well if you want but I love the simplicity of this one yeah I think it's really really effective and stands out and it stands up really nicely and obviously you can carry it as well which I think is really cute so that's using, what was that one, the diamond fold. So next I'm using the 5 by 7 oval and I thought I'd turn this into a watermelon. So I've cut the main die in white and then I've cut it again. But this time I've just trimmed off the tab and then I've cut the matte layer there as well. So I'm going to use, I think, the Twisted Citron and the Rustic Wilderness to create the outer part of the watermelon. Now that piece is going to be folded. In fact, I think I'll stick it together first and then ink it up. So I'm going to stick it like this. So it's a top fold. So that's how the card will open. It's going to be displayed this way. I'm just going to cut a little flat side on that there. So, so just run your glue along the tab there. And then stick that one over. There is a faint, there is a, like a embossed detail, which I'm hoping you're going to pick up when I start to ink it up because it actually works quite well with this watermelon theme. It's like a little swirly stitch detail. So just fold that over, just make sure they all line up. Okay, so I don't need to worry about colouring all of this green because this is going to cover a big proportion. And I'm also going to stick this layer so it's right up to the edge here because this is all going to be in red and I'm going to just probably use some black Nouveau to create the little seeds. So you can see I only need to cover a little bit. So what I'm going to do first of all is use this, this uh, twisted citron and work from the inside out and then use the darker colour from the outside and blend it into the twisted citron. Like so. So I haven't gone right to the edge, so it's still quite light there. And then I'm going to take the Rustic Wilderness and then this time in fact, I'm going to open up the card just so I don't get the green on the underside. Look, I've already caught it a little bit there, but that's OK. And then with the green, I'm just going to now start blending it in. Okay, 
and then I'm going to take my brush. I'm not going to load it back up. I'm just going to now go over and just really blend those two together. And I'm going to use abandoned coral for all of this part here. Now you can just cut this in cardstock if you want. I just thought it'd be quite nice to use the the inks. Okay, so I'm pleased with that. And then I think I'm going to use, and then I'm going to come in with the festive berries. And I want to just darken the flat edge here because that's going to be the outer part of the watermelon there. And just pull it down into the abandoned coral and you can just come back in and just give a and go back over that there but i think that's going to work okay so just give your card a good burnish there okay so i'm going to get this one stuck down i've also just cut the oval pieces there for my topper but i want to get this placed down first so then i can see where i want it to go and where to add the little seeds okay now, to stop this from rocking, whilst that's drying, I'm just going to open it up. And if you just cut a very, very thin amount off the bottom, so make sure it's running parallel with a, a score line or something there so it's nice and straight. You only need to take the smallest piece off. There you go. You see, I've just cut about one eighth of an inch, but now it will stop rocking. Okay. For the sentiment I'm going to use, I have a sweet birthday, which is from my Mater Surprise Sweets and Treats. I think that's going to fit, yeah, quite nice in there. So I'm going to stamp it in black so it matches the seeds when I do those. You can see the stitch detail on the mirrored card there. And you can see that now a lot better when I've added the ink. So now playing around, I think the sentiment is better at the bottom. So we'll pop that one. Like so. So just make sure that you've got no air bubbles. And I want to do something like that, I think. And have them like different ways. So you can see them all there. So don't try and get them all the same size. I don't think you need to if you're going to use the Nouveau. But if you haven't got that, you could use some sequins. You could use a marker, alcohol marker, something like that. That would work as well. But I think it looks really effective. And once that dries, you've got the dimension as well. So it's quite tactile if they touch it. So that's an example using the oval dies. Just a straightforward top folding card. Simple mats and layers. Just a little bit of inking there. I think you get a really nice result. I think it would make a nice little party invitation, that one. So for the last card, I'm using the 6x6 heart die set. Now, I'm not going to use the hearts, but I am using the, the frame. So I've cut myself. We're going to make a piano, as you can probably see. This was something that was mentioned a lot during the in the Facebook chat when I was um, doing the demos. So I thought I would pull out the, the piano die that I mentioned in the live. And I'm also going to show you the embossing folder that was mentioned. So I've die cut this twice, but I'm going to flip them over because a piano, from all the images I've seen, a grand piano is this shape from the left whereas this die has the shape from the, the right when it's cut so you can have it either way to be honest but I thought just in case anybody comes into the comments and says it's the wrong way around I flipped it so cut two of those and then I've cut the vellum and now this is from the Papercraft Society kit so if you've been a member of the Papercraft Society or maybe you've got box number nine this one was a music theme that Paper Discovery did and it also has this embossing folder, which was mentioned during the live. And it is the same width, so it will fit across the six inches there. So whether you've got the embossing folder or if you've got the paper discovery die here, which I'm using, they will both fit. So I just thought I'd mention that. And I've just taken the little um, sequins here. Well, they're not really sequins. They're just little um, music notes. And they would look like quite nice as a added decoration. So... I'm going to stick this one down onto here. Now I'm not going to, I'm going to keep the tabs on the, this one because if you fold the tabs, um, you might want it as a bottom fold card and then just attach the top the same kind of way that I attach the, the Christmas tree one. You can pop a little stopper up there if you wanted to, but I'm going to keep the tabs in because it's going to work best with this die, I think. So it just gives me that extra space. 
So this one here is cut using the outline die here and then this one. So I cut it in uh, black with that and it gives me this shape here and then just cut the outline on its own in white and then you can just sit that over the top. So I'm going to stick that together in a minute and then I'm going to, because it's vellum, I don't want you to see any of the tape. So I'm going to run my tape just along the bottom here and then stick that over the top that would be enough to keep it in place and then when I do add things like this I'm just going to add a couple I can pop a little bit of glue just behind the vellum and then just tack it in place there as well but I'm not too worried about that because I know it's going to hold pretty well okay so that's stuck together but I'm going to add some foam to the back of this I think it would look quite nice just raised slightly and then I'm just going to have to trim a tiny bit off of the edges because it does overhang ever so slightly. Okay then with this one I'm going to take this piece here which is one by six and I've scored along the one inch side at half an inch and I'm going to this is going to be the tab to connect the sides and I'm going to line it up the bottom. I might need to trim it. Oh no, it's, I, I measured it so it should just line up right up to where then it starts to curve. So I might just take a little, no, I think I can just get away with it. Maybe if you've got this die set, just take a little bit off the top, but you can see it just starts to curve off there. So I'm just going to give that a minute to dry. And then I'm just going to add my glue onto this side. And then I'm just going to line up the two pieces like so. And just snip that tiny little bit there away. So that's all stuck together nicely. So you can have it displayed like this if you want, but I thought it'd be nice to have it lifted so it looks a bit more like a piano. So I've cut myself, this is using one of the foam pads here. These are the two mil, uh, sorry, 24 mil. So it's two and a half centimetres. They are, it's about one by one inch by one inch. Just some foam. And then I've put black card on the top and I'm going to have this one stuck down right in the corner there. So I'll pop that down first because then I'll be able to line up everything else. And then I've cut myself... Oh gosh, there must be maybe four or five little thin strips there, which are a quarter of an inch by two and a quarter. And then I've cut this piece, which is a quarter of an inch by one, and I've just folded it in half. I want to stick one piece to here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue on the top there. So I've stuck these all together and I've used the construction glue. So that is now a solid, very strong little strip that's going to be able to hold this up. I just found when I tested it, just a piece of cardstock, even a heavy 300 GSM, didn't quite hold it. Um, it might end up bowing slightly. So just add a few layers on top of each other. And now that is going to stop. I mean, I don't need it to be that big, to be honest. I was just using that whole piece of foam. But this is going to, if I just lift it up, I'm going to stick it there. Can you see how it acts then as a little stopper? So I'm just going to pop some glue on here. And it's up to you kind of, you know, how high you want it. But I think we'll have it about there. Just tack that in place. There we go. So now we've got that effect and I think it looks really cool. And then to close it, you just fold that under and then it all folds flat. But I thought, yeah, what a cute little way to turn it or make it look more like a piano if it didn't already. Then I'm just going to finish it off with some of these little embellishments here. So... I think they're all the same yeah yeah they are so I'll just take one of those and then maybe have these were cut from some of the dies in the that kit that I showed you but you've also got this one as well I don't know whether to just keep them all white actually or have them mixed Okay, and then 
because this is all loose here this is what i was saying before because you see your glue through vellum so now what i can do is just flip that over and where i've got these pieces i'm just going to add a little bit of glue and that'll just be enough to kind of tack it in place and disguise it and just stop that moving around anymore Okay, and you would have just seen me there add some of my accent glaze. I just thought it'd be quite nice to make the keys shiny because they are on a piano. So I've just added some of that. Just give it a little tap on the back there just to smooth that out. You can see now we've got that extra detail. I think it really does bring it all together. And again, just add my little stopper, which I just think does it. I think that's just brilliant. So that's an alternative way of using the 6x6 heart dies. So just bring back in the four cards that I've made there and that's all using these easy fold dies. But like I said at the beginning, you can make a lot of these with or without the dies. But I just thought it was a fun way to show some alternative ways of using them and just thinking a little bit more outside of the box. Let me know which one's your favourite. Is it the watermelon, the handbag, the, the treetops there or the piano? I actually really like them all. Usually I'm always swayed towards one or two, but there's something about each one that I just think is really quite special. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial from me today. I hope it's given you lots of inspiration. You can start looking at what you've got in your stash now to create something similar. And for those of you that have got the dies, hopefully, yeah, it just helps you out a little bit more. As always, everything that I used will be linked in the description box below. If you've enjoyed today and you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And that way you won't miss any future tutorials. Take care and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.